Alright, now this is going to be our first, I guess, true tutorial on setting up, well, really writing code behind our dedicated server. So, the example to really kind of show one of the main strengths about just having a dedicated server set up and running is, well, a way to prevent cheating. So, as you can kind of assume, you really don't want to trust the client but you do want to trust the server, so you don't want to have the client have really any authority over things such as their health or their stamina. But you do want the server to be able to control those things. So what I want to walk you through doing is, well, really just setting yourself up to do that so that the server has authority over your own client. So what we can do is, we can go ahead and just head over here to our Visual Studio project. In my case, well, the character's name is tutorial game character so I'm opening up the character.h and the .cpp now I've just went ahead and stripped some of the VR stuff out of this just because it's well I'm not going to be using it for anything and let's go ahead and just get started so if we head over here to the .cpp we will need to include one header and that is hashtag include net forward slash unreal network and this will allow us to replicate variables. Now if we head over to our .h file, we will create our first variable that we're going to replicate and we're just going to do health. So I'm just going to make a new protected section and I'm going to make this a u property. Add the replicated macro and do float health. So this is the variable that we're going to be controlling strictly on the server. I'm also going to actually going to make a quick little function real quick. Uh, U function blueprint pure and float get or yeah just get health. And all this is going to do is I want to make a little widget so that way we can easily just display our health variable. Just so we always know what it is and it's easier to find well at least for testing so I'm going to go ahead and add its definition here so float a tutorial tutorial I am spelling that way wrong game character get health return health alright I'm just going to set it default value for health health equals a hundred alright now I do want to set up a little way to lower the health so void lower health and go ahead and add that as well void hey yeah you already get the idea game character lower health health minus equals um that's five doesn't really matter all right control shift b to build and then we're going to move over to setting up the little widget so we can display our health for ourselves <coughs> so i'll just do this right in content right click user interface make a widget blueprint uh, or let's just call it stat hud open it up I'm gonna add just click and drag a text block over here just increase the size to 32 and we're gonna go over here beside text and we're gonna create a binding for the text. So what we're going to do is get our player controller. So get player and you actually just get player character then get health wait, now we need to cast it first, sorry. Cast to tutorial game character or in your case, well whatever you named your project Try this little execution, whatever you would call it, node thingy. I'm not familiar with Blueprint, as you can tell. Over there, so it runs. Then, as the tutorial game character, we want to get health. Alright, maybe 
I didn't set that up right. Oh, well, that's also partially why I didn't even build. Oh, right, because I have that set to replicate it without the uh, actual implementation of it. So just build real quick, one more time, comment out the replicated portion. We'll set that up here in a second. Alrighty, it is built. And as the character, we're going to get health. We can convert this to a string. Actually, I wonder if it'll do it for me. Yes, it does. And then if it fails, it's going to be our return node. So compile, save. Then if we go to our character blueprint, so third person CPP, blueprint, third person character. We're going to go to the event graph and on begin play, we're going to create widget. Under class, we're going to select stat HUD. And then over here for the return value, we're going to add to viewport, just like that. And granted, this is not really the correct way to do things, but when we hit play, we should see our HUD, or our health. And as you can see, it's showing our health as 100. So now whenever we change it, yeah, this is the main reason I was talking about it's not the proper way. But the main reason we want to do that, just so we could see our health, makes everything nice and easy to go through and just test with. So we're going to create a quick little binding to lower our health just to make things easier. So we're going to go to settings, project settings, input, action mappings. We're going to add a new one. Just call it take damage. And I'm going to bind this to, um, and I'll just do the Y key. Close that. Save it. Actually, I'm going to leave that open because I'm going to end up forgetting what I called it. I'll just, yeah, all right, yeah, take damage. All right, so now we're going to go to our CPP file, go to where we add inputs. So right here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the one for jump. And replace it with what we said. So that was take damage, I hope. We're going to change a character to our character class. And then the actual function name to what we called it. No, I called it lower health, not take damage. So it's going to call our lower health function whenever we press whatever key we set it to. So in our case, well, my case, Y. All right, so Control Shift B to build. Now when we press Y, we should see our health going from 100 to 95, since it's subtracting 5 from our health. So play, press Y, 95, 90, so on and so on. As you can see, that's working just as planned. Now I'm going to give you an example here. So. As you, if you watched the first video, I showed you how to set up a dedicated server. So run a host one. And then we're going to go ahead and join it with the client. And then open up Cheat Engine. Alrighty, here's our client. Alright, Cheat Engine here. Oops. Alright. And our, this is our game right here, our actual client that's, as you can see, behind us. We're going to open that. Scan for a float. Scan for 100. Then we're going to press Y to lower it. Now we're going to scan for 95. We're going to do it again. Scan for 90. As you can see, it's not that one. That just changed to whatever in the... Oops, not any of those either. So let's just drop it down to 75. Alright, so as of right now, it could be any of these except for... Okay, it's not any of these then, because they're randomly changing. So let's get rid of them. And this should be our health. So, change it to 100. As you can see, it changed to 100. And when I press Y again, it goes back down to 95. Where in reality, that should go from... That should go immediately to 70. 
which is what the server had initially had it set to. Now, as you can assume, this could lead to quite a game-breaking cheat, just being able to have infinite health and never take any damage. So if I lock it at 95, I press Y, as you can see, that happens. It's just continually looping and setting it back to 95. This is what we want to really avoid with our dedicated server setup. So we can go ahead and start doing that now. Go ahead and close all this. I think that's everything. Yep. Alright, so back in our header, we're going to reset health to be replicated. <coughs> then we're going to go to our CPP. And personally, I just put this after where our setup input component is. This is where we're going to be replicating our variables. Now, instead of typing all this out, I'm going to leave this in the description for you to copy and paste and simply put in your project. So change out a example with your character's class name. Do that for these two. And then the second portion on your do rep lifetime, that's going to be the variable you want to replicate. So in our case, it is health. So set that. Control shift B just to make sure everything builds properly. And just shorten this up a little bit. Alright, so we're good to go and our health variable is now replicated. So what we can do is in our yep here, our lower health, this is where we're gonna have it be purely done on the server. So when we press well, in my case, Y, it's going to call our lower health function, which in turn is going to run strictly on the client. So one thing we can do here, just for an example, we're going to check our role. So if, and since we're in our character, we have access to our role variable, role equals role authority, meaning we are the server, we want to subtract 5 from the health. Now, in some cases, this is going to cause issues and I'll kind of show you how to work around them because if you try to access the character from another class you may run into some problems. So just launch the dedicated server and the client. And then we're going to press Y. And as you can see it's not lowering because we're doing we're trying to call the code strictly on the client whereas if this was something well we have no way of telling the server to run it if that makes any sense so what we're going to do is change this up a little bit so we're going to add an elf else statement or block whatever you want to call it and here's where we're going to call the function to run from it's going to go from the client to the server then it's going to go from the server well, the server is essentially just going to rerun this function. And since it is the server that's running this function again, it is the authority. So it is going to subtract our health on the server. And because our health is replicated, in turn, when it gets lowered on the server, it's going to be lowered on our client. So a way to set that up is, I'll just do it between these two. We're going to make a U function. We're going to call it, I think it's what's the macro. Oh, right. Server, then reliable, because it's related to health, and with that, yeah, it's with validation, not validate. Then void server. I generally, so when you're making a function that's going to be called to the server, you I would suggest you index it with where, where it's going. So if this was a multicast, you would replace server with multicast and same thing for well client so server lower health then add the two other functions which is the validate and the implementation so bool server lower health underscore validate and void server lower health implementation. really hope I spelled that right. Then we are simply going to 
add them up down here so void hey I'm not typing that server lower health validate we're just simply going to return actually what we can do is if health is greater than zero just simply return true else return false this is where you can add other miscellaneous checks to kind of really influence your gameplay how you want then just save time void and implementation now the implementation all it's going to do is I'm just just out of habit I'm going to do another role check role equals role authority if it does call lower health and then if we go back to so remember when we press our Y key it's going to call this function and if we are the th authority we want to go ahead and subtract our health if we're not meaning we're the client we want to call the server function to subtract our health for us so I'm going to call server lower health in the else block now let's go ahead and build it and you will see a different result when we actually go to play our health should lower just as normal but you'll see a different result when we go to actually try to modify it with cheat engine so then join the client alrighty so press Y lowers 95 just as planned but now if this one scan for a float 95 let's go ahead and lower it again 90 and just one two more times 80 all right so it's going to be one of these nope oh, though these four just did the exact same thing and changed so we know it's not them so what we know is it's this very well this address here now the address the variable itself is going to change visually so set it to 100 remember it is 80 as you can see our health is currently at 100 but when I call that function again to lower it you should see it drop to 75 yep just like so because while we're changing it here on the client we're not changing that variables value on the server so the server has in just all the authority over our health variable so even if we try to like lock it for example it just wouldn't work because our server would do the check so let's say we get shot and that brings our health below or equal to zero meaning that we've died well we would be performing that check on the server not on the client so the server would know we died and in turn the server would do all the necessary function calls or to whatever how we have it set up for when we die to literally force ourselves to die so we can't just simply you know lock our selves at a hundred here as you can see it's still lowering 40 35 30 it's really kind of hard to see because I think I'm recording at like 30 FPS but you can see it's at 25 you know just keep going down and it just not like it's just not we're not really able to really cheat this out so yep, something in there meh so hopefully that was a good explanation and on kind of an, just setting yourself up to not really leave vulnerabil vulnerabilities in your game because simple things like that can make a massive difference between well your product having just absolutely full of the most outrageous cheats kind of like assault cube for example which is known for just strictly being like the cheat learning game or something more so on the along the lines of call of duty where you only have to worry about things such as esp aimbot that sort of thing but people are still killable so hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll try to come up with an idea for the next one, but I'm not entirely sure on what to do yet. So, if you have any suggestions, please let me know.